It's June 23rd, 2018, and today I took a little bit of a road trip. I drove two and a half hours in each direction to Scranton, South Carolina to visit Mackenzie Farms. Mackenzie Farms is an operation owned by Stan Mackenzie. He is South Carolina's only citrus farmer. Yes, that's right, he has an actual citrus farm in South Carolina, and there he grows some of the rarest varieties of citrus in the world that are extremely hard to find that can tolerate cold climates and deep freezes. So, I picked up a few varieties of citrus trees there, and it was a pretty awesome adventure. bunch of hardy citrus here. Load it up. So let me briefly take you through what I purchased at Mackenzie Farms today. So obviously here in North Carolina, it is not an ideal climate for citrus. It's not any kind of climate for citrus anywhere in the state. Citrus in general don't like being exposed to temperatures uh, below freezing, and a lot of different varieties of citrus can't even tolerate a light frost. But there are some special kinds that have been bred over generations that can. And this little guy right here is the gateway to success. This is a wild trifoliate orange. So these guys, these are basically the crab apple of the orange or the uh, citrus family. They are hardy to something like minus 5 to minus 10 degrees. So you could grow a trifoliate orange in Ohio if you wanted to, in Michigan, in areas of Wisconsin, because they can take almost down to double digits below zero. So, um, they do actually produce fruit. The fruit kind of looks like a lime, lemon, lumpy hybrid. It's not considered edible because it's very tart and loaded with seeds, but it can be used as a lemon or lime substitute if you're willing to seed it. You can squeeze the juice out of it and use it for rinds. But the cool thing about them is the root stock is very, very tolerant to deep freezes. So this rootstock right here is the key to adding extra hardiness to other types of citrus, like this. This here is called a red lime. Now there are many different kinds of limes labeled red lime, so I hope this is the correct one that I think it is, but the red lime that I'm thinking of is actually a, um, it's a, a trifoliate cross that's hardy to about 10 degrees or so. Um, and it's also grafted, as you can see, onto the trifoliate rootstock, which gives it an additional degree of protection. So I don't know if this is going to be successful or not. My goal is to grow this out into a three or a five gallon pot and then actually try to plant this in the ground here. Um, now, and when I say hardy to 10 degrees, by the way, or 15 degrees or whatever, that means that um, the tree will come back if it gets killed down to the root and can basically be cut and come back. <laughs> when you see hardy to 15 degrees, that means 15 degrees will probably defoliate it, but it can grow back. 
but hey, that's okay. You can plant them on the south side of your house and you can insulate them with frost cloth on the worst nights for an additional degree of protection. Next up, and this is what I'm most excited about. This is the plant that I really took the trip for. This is an Owari Satsuma. Now, Owari Satsumas are commonly sold at big box stores, but I don't know what the rootstock it'll be grafted onto will be. This Owari Satsuma is grafted onto a trifoliate rootstock. So that should mean that the, the plant at the bottom here will be very hardy no matter what happens. It should be able to survive this climate under almost all conditions in an average year. But an Owari Satsuma is a small mandarin. It's zipper skin, which means that once you peel off a piece, the whole skin pops right off. And then they're one of those nice little, they look like a clementine, there's no seeds in them, and they just pop into pieces. They pop in a twelfths or sixteenths, or they're segmented. You've probably had them before. They're very sweet, and they're one of the few very good tasting citrus that you can grow in the coastal Carolinas. So I'm going to give this a shot and see how it does. When my house gets built, I'm going to plant this on the south side uh, next year. And uh, that way, I, I want to plant it at the end of March after it is uh, safe from frost, maybe the beginning of April, and then let it establish for a solid six, seven months uh, before any kind of freezes come and I think with just very minimal protection I may actually be able to successfully fruit this mandarin here. This is another cool thing that I just had to buy when I was there. This is a pineapple guava. I don't think I've ever had a guava before but Stan had a pineapple guava growing at, in his garden. I'll, because he saw 8 degrees this past year, this ridiculous awful winter that we had in the south, well, and the Northeast, um, a lot of his Satsumas got straight up killed. Eight degrees is just more than any, really any citrus can handle, but his pineapple guava was still alive and kicking, and it is a huge tree. So um, these can get pretty big. I'm going to have to manage this very well, but it was a beautiful tree, and it was pretty inexpensive, so I figured I'd give it a shot. And the last thing that I purchased while I was there is the Moro Blood Orange. Now, a Moro Blood Orange is hardy into the mid to upper 20s. I'm not going to be able to plant this in ground here. Um, you're not going to be able to plant this in ground in almost all of the United States unless you're in southern Florida or southern California or uh, very select areas of Texas or Arizona. But I'm going to container this. You can see it is grafted. But it's not a trifoliate rootstock, it's not a dwarf rootstock. If, if I was in a climate where this could grow, this tree could get to be 20 feet tall. But a container should constrict it, and I should be able to get pretty nice fruit out of this tree. It may not color properly because I'm not in a Mediterranean climate, so I may not get that deep red color that you're familiar with, or maybe I will. It'll be an experiment, so we'll see what happens. But I am very excited with what I purchased. And Stan's prices are very affordable. He's a very, very, very nice man. I suggest you check out his website. It's mckenzie-farms.com. I think that's what it is. He, has, uh, he fulfills orders online if you give him a call. He has some awesome stuff. So if you're in a marginal climate like I am and you're interested in growing citrus and you think you'd never be able to, well, you might be wrong. And if you can't actually grow edible citrus, you might be able to grow some pretty cool um, inedible or ornamental citrus that will really wow your friends, family, and neighbors. So this is what I purchased. If this goes well and I get these to establish over the next couple of years, I think I'll probably be back and visit him earlier in the year when he has more of the selection remaining and see what other cool things I can get. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please feel free to subscribe to the channel, uh, comment, like, share the video, and I really appreciate you watching this, guys.